personal anecdote. There was a period in my life where I had repeated intimate encounters with something called panic attacks. Usually, these were of the existential sort. What is life? Who is this body? Is our reality fake? Why is my heart going so fast? Anyway, you know what I like to do after panic attacks? I like to watch two bald pixel people speak to each other in Russian. Я знаю. Я положил его туда. You're probably thinking, what the hell did you just show me? Well, that was from a series called Tux and Fanny, and it will change you. Tux and Fanny is the creation of a guy called Albert Bernie, who is not Russian. He's from Baltimore. Bernie is actually a fairly prolific indie filmmaker, and he's had his other stuff shown at places like Sundance. His M.O. is kind of being weird and abstract and sometimes philosophical. But Tux and Fanny is a very interesting piece of media. I mean, this is how it starts. А посмотри, Фанни, это котенок. Вау. О, Фанни, мы должны привезти его внутрь и дать ему дом. Что делать, если кошка покрыта блохами, которые наводняют наш дом? That was the whole pilot episode. The show was first released as a series, with one-minute episodes like that premiering on Instagram. But then Bernie stitched all the episodes together, added a scene here and there, and turned the show into two feature films. And all of this is on YouTube, so if you haven't, you really should check it out. Actually, in the early episodes, Tux and Fanny really makes itself out to be just a silly little animation project, not unlike the wacky, creative, and meme-laden animations of old YouTube. But unlike a lot of those old animations, it's shockingly uncynical and actually quite sweet. So, who are these little pixel people? Well, despite being a man and a woman who live together, they're not romantic partners or siblings or anything. They're just really super close friends. Although they do have a strong bromance going on. And they live with their cat Sasha in the middle of nowhere. Literally, there's almost no other people in this show. I don't think they ever interact with another corporeal human being once. Like, they have utilities and everything. But there's literally an episode in which they run out of food, and they don't even consider going to the store as an option. So yeah, they just somehow live in this cute little woodland house and buy computers and shit off the internet. Do you people work? At first, it kind of seems like this show is meant to be just very simple and comedy focused, but as you get further into it, the greater vision starts to reveal itself. Посмотрите на этот красивый дуванчик. Посмотрите на форму структуру. Миллионы лет эволюция привели к этому дизайну. Эти нежные паломники рассеются по четырем углам этой обширной вселенной. Фанни, мы похожи на эти семена. Придет день, когда мы должны в пути искать нашу судьбу. Yeah, I guess you could say it gets deep. And I mean... That clip basically sums up what this show is like. There's technically a coherent story here, but it's mostly just Tux, the pink one, and Fanny, the purple one, meandering through and pondering their weird, semi-magical pixel lives. And also they play soccer a lot. 
At least that's how it is in the episodes that make up the first movie. Tux and Fanny are both really existential thinkers, but there's some notable differences between them. Tux does more of the ruminating and is a little more in his head, but Fanny's more in the moment and practical. Which is interesting, because Fanny actually goes through some of the most visceral existential experiences in the entire show. Like at one point, Fanny gets zapped into her computer and Tux tries to delete her file to bring her back, but instead she undergoes a horrific computer trip. I'm sure you see now why I've referred to their world as semi-magical. She's called to by a giant magnet, which is really creepy to think about because magnets delete computer data, so it's like this magnet is beckoning Fanny to be erased forever while she floats in binary limbo. And it gets even worse, because then Fanny gets souped into this simulation of her day-to-day -day reality, only things are all morphed and shit. It's like a weird psychological horror of an episode. Books. promise this isn't a horror series, it just gets like that sometimes. As for Tux, he vocalizes these deep takes a lot more, but it kind of makes him act like a wacko. But I think that when Fanny is undergoing all these horrifying, unexplainable experiences, the way that Tux can just look at things in an equally bizarre but positive way can be really comforting to that sort of fear. Like after Fanny escapes the computer, she basically starts having acid flashbacks, and for a while she just keeps it to herself. But then when she finally talks to Tux about it, she feels way better. As philosophical and wise as they are, though, there's something very average about these two. Like, there's an episode where Tux gets addicted to a video game, which makes Fanny feel really sad and lonely. And there's another where they break their TV after trying to watch two channels at the same time. And I feel like that's very essential to have them represent what actual human beings are like. I've seen a lot of characters and even real people trying to act as though they're above everyone else because they have some kind of deep existential understanding. But to me, that's like failing at step one. Because the first step to really learning anything about yourself or your existence is being open to and accepting what you really are. You're a stinky, pleasure-driven, ego-having animal that likes to eat hot pockets and stick q-tips in your ear. Don't do that, by the way, it's not good for you. But it's okay to be that way. At the end of the day, you can still do amazing things with your body and mind in spite of your natural instincts. Like... Dance with the ducks! What? I should go. 
all my friends! There's a real sense in Tux and Fanny that everything in life has a lot of depth, but it's also all quite simple. As far as philosophical art pieces go, this is probably one of the least pretentious ones I've ever seen. The psychedelia and revelations are almost presented as just funny. Every time Tux waxes poetic about mortality or some shit, it's almost always played for laughs, because it's immediately after contrasted with Fanny saying something really simple and matter-of-fact. In one of my favorite episodes, Tux asks Fanny if she thinks there's anything after death, to which she just says, I don't know, I guess we'll find out someday. And that's the whole conversation. Oh, did I mention that by this point Tux doesn't actually have flesh anymore? Yeah, really early on in the show, Tux slathers peanut butter all over himself and tries to get a colony of ants to eat it off, but they literally eat his entire body, so Fanny knits him a new skin suit in episode 11, but not before she boils him in the bath and tries to make soup with the remaining flesh on his bones. Also, there's a chicken that lives in Tux's ribcage. Oh. By the end of the show, there's like... I don't know if it counts as lore, but there's just an insane amount of absurd backstory to everything. Like why Tux can unzip his skin and somehow survive as just a skeleton, or why Fanny wants to carry this dirt-filled deer skull to the ocean, etc. Some really sad stuff does happen to them though, and it doesn't really affect the chill vibe all that much. Like in the episode where Sasha runs away and never comes back. There's like this whole symbolic moment where Tux and Fanny are looking for Sasha in the woods. They come across a bunch of chickens, which makes the chicken in Tux's ribcage go crazy. Jesus, that's a sentence. So Tux lets it go, knowing it'll be happier with the other chickens. And likewise, they later see Sasha on the riverside, and he has a new family. And they just kind of respectfully nod at him as they pass by. <laughs> I am a little sad that Sasha ran away so early in the series. He really was a nice part of the household. And it's not like he didn't like his owners or anything. I mean, he did dream about them. But he just kind of needed to be with his kind. Big changes like this are viewed sort of detachedly, like, they process it, but it doesn't really consume them. Even when their house burns down near the end of the first movie, it's just kind of the start of another adventure. It's like the conflict isn't that hard-hitting, but it somehow manages to make you really emotional anyway. A lot more happens in the second movie, and it's much more coherent. So if you want to see the rest of the show for yourself, you should probably stop watching now. Trust me, it's really good and worth watching on your own. The second movie is called Eyeballs in the Darkness, and I'll talk a little more about that later. It starts out with Tux and Fanny camping out by the ocean after their house burned down, but Fanny quickly comes down with a serious infection. At first, Tux tries to make Fanny feel better using snail music, but this time she needs some real medicine. While Tux goes to look for some, Fanny basically has a near-death experience. A ladybug crawls into Fanny's ear as she begins to die, and starts pulling on her brain. Which causes Fanny to experience this. Тот момент, когда оно летит по воздуху. 
я умираю. И все же теперь мне так ясна абсурдность этого момента, абсурдность всех моментов. Переживать это, испытывать что-либо вообще, это так радостно абсурдно. И это похоже на чудо. And this is when Fanny basically delivers the main point of the show. That living is absurd. Life is random, it's hard, and there's no certain meaning to it. Whether you even get to live, let alone to be a human, is completely random. But getting to live, especially as a human, despite the pain, the meaninglessness, the confusion and injustice, is a miracle. Because there's a lot of beauty in this random universe, and there are so many other humans to share it with. This shit makes me want to sob. But Fanny, also by random chance, actually survives. A rabbit just happens to jump on her heart and restart it. And then she realizes that there's a talking ladybug in her brain. Whenever Pasha bites Fanny's brain, it changes how she sees the world. And eventually, she teaches Fanny how to change her own perspective. Which, like, seems to imply that Fanny is somehow enlightened after almost dying. I think. Anyway, in the second half of the movie, they explore a house which is haunted by this adorable little ghost guy. Fanny tries to use her perspective powers to change the ghost into a form they can communicate with, but he stays the same no matter what perspective Fanny is seeing through. I think maybe this is because he's just kind of the pure essence of a human. He isn't a perspective, he's just the truest form of a person with all the illusions stripped away. So they learn that the ghost's name is Claude, and he kind of directs them around the house, trying to show them the things that tell his story. Like this home videotape. In one of the most tragic episodes in the whole show, Fanny reads Claude's journal to Tux. And it's all just one shot of Fanny reading that Claude lost his son to illness and his wife to an implied suicide. So at the end of the movie, they go out into the desert to find Claude's bones and bury him next to his family, setting his spirit free. And there's another parallelism moment in this storyline with Claude's fish tank. Originally, there were three fish in the tank, but after burying Claude, they come back to find that two of the fish have died. 
So they take the lone fish to the ocean and release him. Actually, there's a lot of ocean in this show. I see it as kind of representing a great cosmic everything. Like, they release the fish into the ocean just like they release Claude into eternity. I'm gonna die. And that's the whole show for now. Bernie says he plans to make more after a break, so I'm pretty hyped for that. These are great characters, and the absolute depth of devotion between them is adorable. Like at one point, Tux gets lost, and Fanny makes a horrifying fake Tux to hang out with, and she even tries to get existential with him. And I especially love the bedtime episode where Tux winds up a music box to help Fanny sleep. God, it's so cute. I love this series. Sometimes it's very meaningful, and sometimes it's not. But it's always wildly interesting. And in a way, that's kind of the nature of life, too. Endless stimuli that can be interpreted in countless ways. Some of it is incredibly profound. Like a shroom's trip. And some of it is basically just a meaningless mishmash of information. Like a shroom's trip. I don't know, maybe every beat in this show has some deep subtext to it. Like with the episode Eyeball Dream. Maybe it has something to do with the fear and pressure of being a thing that can be perceived by other things. Perhaps you can write an entire essay on the part where the golden caterpillar is singing opera to the dead. And I think it definitely does have something to do with Tux considering Fanny to be his home. But I also wouldn't blame this particular show for having just some random shit in it. Because it's such a celebration of how weird life is. And as for the title, Eyeballs in the Darkness, I think it refers to the characters and humanity as a whole. We're just a bunch of eyeballs seeing a world that we don't understand. We're in the dark, trying to figure things out as we go. But there's something so wonderful about that. Yeah, this show's hilarious, and it's cute, and it'll make you cry. Tux and Fanny just takes it easy. It's kind of nihilistic yet beautiful take on life boils down to a belief, but I think it's a belief that makes good and happy people. You can't not believe in anything. They were nihilists, man. Huh? They kept saying they believed in nothing. Even if you believe there is nothing to believe in, that's still a perspective. Our entire existence is perspective. But Tux and Fanny has a perspective that takes scary shit like subjective reality, death, and meaninglessness, and makes it all very palatable. And it can truly pull me out of the mud when my overly sensitive nervous system wants me to fear the worst. And that's the power of art, man. Sorry to get all mushy on you there. I love media that forces me into a good, joyous, existential cry. Like, I loved talking about Stray earlier this year, and I was really looking forward to making this video. But wait, that's not all. Because in 2021, Albert Burney released a Tux and Fanny video game. 
So, there's gonna be a part two to this video. That's the part two thunder. So, I guess that means you're gonna have to come back and watch that video. Bye!